I'm Teresa Au. Welcome to In The Making, where I have conversations with creatives, solopreneurs, and experts that explore the challenges and the rewards of the creator economy. In the summer, we like to mix it up a bit. So I'm bringing you another bonus episode. This time, I wanted to share some fantastic interviews conducted by my Adobe colleagues and evangelists, Claudie Virginie and Elise Swopes, who with Lucy Street host Creative Connection Live, an Instagram live show featuring one guest and three questions in 15 minutes. First, we'll have Claudie, who is an Italian designer and content creator based in the UK, a fashion plate and a dear friend of mine, talking to Manchester UK designer Jack Watson about his surprising and inspiring career path. So hello everyone, I'm Jack Watson, brand designer from Manchester, England, and I like to help other designers on social media through Instagrams, TikToks, LinkedIn posts, and now also YouTube videos. Amazing. How did you get to do what you do right now? You're young, I'm jealous, yeah. and uh, I want to learn and I yeah, want yeah. to share your successful career with everybody. So I'm actually only 21 years old for anyone that doesn't know, and I've actually been designing for ages now. It goes way back to when I was in year eight of high school, so I would have been 13. And I remember Instagram was just gaining a bit of traction around then. It still wasn't popular. It was nothing like it was now. Seeing all these really cool edits of people in different football kits that they shouldn't have been. So I remember going home that night, just studying YouTube, finding Photoshop. And I was amazed by it, overwhelmed by all the complex sort of shortcuts. I was only used to sort of Microsoft Word and PowerPoint. So it was a, it was a big step up for me, especially only being 13, 14. So then from there, the next steps were stop my own Instagram, try and sort of recreate this sort of own thing. And then I actually got it to about 30,000 followers when I was only in, I think it was like year nine going into year 10. So I would have been about 14, 15. However, because of how young and naive I was and Instagram was nothing like it was now, I sold the account for, I think it was about 20 or 30 pounds to buy a new video game that year so probably a big mistake on my part but it was all a good learning curve and then from then i sort of i had good consistent work throughout high school doing little bits for similar like transfer rumors of footballers and then moving into college i actually started my own live events company which was pretty successful that started in preston and we had some absolutely huge names international djs such as yuma vicker ben emsley hannah lang so, so which are all massive now, and um, some people might know them. And yeah, I did all the graphics for that, did the own artworks, I did all of the promotional pieces. We turned that into a label and actually was making all the graphics for that as well. And that actually caused a lot of spark for people wanting their graphics to look like that. So that's where I started to get a bit of a client base going with the music scene. Um, however, the budgets for that just, it wasn't quite there i was balancing my accounting job at the time as well so i was constantly just being an entrepreneur five to nine and an accountant nine to five so it was it was a pretty hectic few years but then i started to study logo design and yeah from there it's just been a bit of a crazy journey i've been posting every day on the instagram account and now we're at 200,000 followers i share all the tutorials behind it and i've worked with some huge brands like zara jägermeister and so, so grateful for it. Yeah, it's amazing to be doing what I love full time. I love the way that you uh, also intertwine music. There are many designers that, you know, I think because of the poster flyer that yeah. comes alongside like events. For me, it was more on the restaurant and hospitality. So I've done like more menu. You know, everybody starts by doing business well, cards. I kind of... <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Being stingy on budgets and learning friend. yourself and then, yeah, just starting to do more. But yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's the story behind that everybody that ends up being successful, you just have to start small and never give up. What is your lead magnet? How do you attract your clients? How do you secure your clients? Tell us more. Yes, yeah, so this is actually one that people might be a bit shocked at, but I actually do absolutely no outreach at all. I just create content on as many platforms as possible, uh, primarily Instagram. So I actually found this method out by accident. It was literally just by posting content just to help other designers. And then 
that's when I actually started to get more and more inquiries through with people obviously having trust in my skills, asking for sort of rebrands and little bits of digital content here and there. And then I thought, obviously, with that being quite effective, just start to leverage it, post more content, have a look, see what's doing well, see what retains attention. Because I think a big thing with the Instagram posts, it's absolutely all about them first 1.5 to 2 seconds. So I've gone through loads of different styles of trying. Maybe it's stood at the front with a text and pointing towards it or flashing the end of a design and then going through the process of it. There's loads of different ways that have worked, but to be honest, it's, it's still ever changing. I've tried with speaking over the top of them and they don't seem to get as much engagement um, because I think the ones without the voiceover, they appeal more to a worldwide audience, which obviously is great for a lot of reach and eyes on your design. So yeah, I think also another thing to not get too caught up in as well is the numbers. I like to post a couple for the algorithm during the week, maybe just being like a quick tutorial, but then also on showcasing my design skills because I find that even if they don't have a lot of likes on, your clients can still be lurking around there and that can be where they discover you. But I think also what I'm moving into this year, I've mainly focused on Instagram as my lead magnet. However, I'm actually moving into posting more on LinkedIn because it's a lot more business to business over there and people are sort of ready to buy. And I'm also going up to the longer format stuff on YouTube so I can actually talk over it. Do you produce everything yourself in terms of your content? Yeah, absolutely everything. So it's really, really busy. I've got, I posted a picture of my calendar on my story the other day. Every Monday morning, I just completely populate that calendar from waking up in the morning, 5.30 to go to the gym and then working completely up until 9 p.m. every night, even on weekends at the moment, just until I can sort of afford to get like a, a video editor in when it seems worth it and stuff like that. This is just going to be a year of hard work and discipline, definitely. Amazing. Uh, you lost me at 5.30 a.m. Yeah. at the gym. <laughs> I know, yeah, it's, uh, it's tough sacrifices no, you've got to make with self-employed. Uh, I think it's amazing and uh, it's so important for mental health and physically. What is your favorite project you worked on? So, it's a good question. There's been a few really good ones this year, but I'd say probably the standout one to me was the Zora project that I worked on in May and that was a 3D logo creation for the love and pride promotion that they did and I think the reason why this one was so special to me was because I think it was the first big one that came through the door um, and I think I just I just couldn't believe it really I was posting it was when the illustrator 3D had just come out and it was just gaining a lot of eyes I was quite early on in posting the videos and they were getting millions and millions of views that's what kick-started the account pretty quickly to be honest it started just spiraling out of control and then Zara got in contact and they wanted a 3D logo with a quick turnaround for that and they said it was going to be across every single store in the whole world so it was a really special one for me because I think when it actually came into play I remember I was in Manchester when it first came out and I went and had a look and it was just great and I had family members that were in London taking me pictures and sending it over and then I actually went to Barcelona that weekend as well nipped over to the Zara just to have a look and it, it was on the window and it was just a really cool moment so it's just stuck with me that one definitely yeah it's so amazing when you see your work transformed into like a real physical thing, yeah, right? Definitely. You yeah. said regarding your favorite project with Zara, then Zara reached out. Am I being too nosy asking you how they reach out? So I was actually really surprised at the time. I didn't even have, because I was just putting out tutorials. I wasn't really trying to really get big clients. I was just sort of getting like little ones through the door mainly just through Instagram DMs. So because I had no email in my bio, I just said on my phone, I was working as an accountant at the time and it said, Zara wants to send you a message. And I just thought it would be a woman called Zara. So I had to look <laughs> at my phone and I was like, oh, opened it. And it's like 60 million followers. And I was like, please, can we get your email? He wants to reach out to you. So it was in your DMs? Yeah, yeah literally in the DMs, yeah. Perfect. And that's the reason why I wanted to share. And I love the fact that you're saying, I was still my accountant job. I didn't have an email. You, you didn't yeah, have a design exactly. website with a portfolio or anything. No, no thing. And I think that this is so inspiring. You don't necessarily have to have everything set up. All you have to do is to be consistent and put that Definitely, work yeah. in and experiment. And hats off to you. Jack, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. 
I love Jack's story so much. To be only 21 and have so much design and business experience, it's not just impressive. There's so much to learn from him about consistency and effort. Now, I'm happy to introduce photographer, designer, and content creator Elise Swoops, another Adobe colleague, good friend, and just one of the coolest people you'll ever meet. Elise talks to Los Angeles-based artist Dewey Saunders about why he creates both physical and digital artwork and where music fits in. Okay, so welcoming... Our chat with Dewey Saunders, a visionary artist, blending collage, illustration, graphic design. Dewey's work is incredible. Dewey's work reflects his millennial roots and South Florida's vibrant culture, creating a unique visual language. Let's dive into his creative world. Dewey, your work obviously spans multiple mediums from collage to digital design. Can you share how your artistic journey evolved and what influences have shaped your unique style? So my artistic style has evolved a lot since I graduated college with a graphic design portfolio. I was doing a lot of illustration at the time and it was all pen and ink and portraits of different people. And I was really going for like an editorial illustration career for a little while, right after school, I was just doing everything hand-drawn. But after a couple of years, I realized that that wasn't a style that I could scale or grow into it was almost like it wasn't exactly what I needed to do for a career path and over time I started to realize I was covering up my drawings with little collages and kind of getting like really intrigued by the way the mixed media stuff was kind of like popping out the sketchbook so I kind of found this medium by accident by covering up drawings I didn't like and just falling in love with this kind of mixed media collage feel that is really immediate because of the photography sources that I was using and stuff like that. So um, a couple of years after graduation, I started drifting into more of the music scene in Philadelphia. And I was kind of the artist of the crew. And basically, instead of drawing the stuff, I would kind of like give collage covers and, and start that way. So that was like really when it first started clicking for me. I realized that my medium was collage and that the perfect project for my medium was the album cover. And I just loved the dimensions of it. For some reason, I thought the square was like a perfect shape. And it also allowed me to make work that was a little bit more open to interpretation rather than something that's very specific. But I never really used the computer to generate graphics or to generate art. I just use it to almost organize and layer and allow me to like express some ideas but it's a perfect marriage of like the digital and analog processes which all my work is informed by even if it starts digital there's definitely some like analog texture just the way i think about it but i never really start with the computer and to be completely honest i think that i was a little too stuck in the fact that I was doing stuff by hand. And I think that um, now I'm, I'm really embracing the digital aspect of it because I think that I can like push my ideas so far and there's nothing wrong with digital artwork. It's amazing. But I think that personally, it's not a gimmick, but my edge is just bringing a different texture to things. Of course. And being in the music industry, it was really liberating as an artist to be able to match the art with the music and it didn't have to be so literal. It could be like a little more abstract. And I think that's where I was shining for a long time. It's like, I'm, I'm glad you touched on that because obviously you're yeah. really known as well in the music scene. So basically in Philadelphia, a lot of people know me with the music before the art. And I was doing both um, pretty hard and kind of had to choose one or the other and the music thing is still happening but I decided to make art my career and I think that was a, a good choice overall but <laughs> it allows me to make music without pressure and it can be a hobby for me um, but yeah that's that's a really good point my my love of music and being in the music industry allowed me to 
be an artist that understood the musicians I was working with. So I was even able to like put myself in their shoes, realize what they wanted for a cover. And because I make music myself, I knew how big of a thing an album cover was for somebody. Of course, absolutely. Obviously, collaboration seems to be a key aspect of your process. Can you share how working with other artists or clients influences your approach to projects? And then what strategies do you use to make sure that your vision is, you know, staying, staying put? Yeah, that's a really great question. And I think every project is different. So sometimes an artist has a really clear idea of what they want. And sometimes they want my Dewey Saunders style. But as an artist, I'm always like, kind of pitching different ideas. I don't want to do the same thing all the time. So it really depends on what the artist has in mind. And if they want me to creative direct and come up with the idea, I'm more than happy to do so, even though it is a different job than just being a graphic designer. So it is a project by project basis with Anderson Pack's Malibu cover. We had a really clear direction and mood board for what we wanted. And that was really important in the process to get greenlit before we did all this work that for no reason that wasn't going to be approved. So. I think like with the collaboration, I had a really great project with an artist named Ivan Av, and he understood my analog process and he wanted me to recreate that process for his album cover, which is rare because for commercial projects, I usually bring all my elements in a digital environment so I can make any changes and edits that I want to. But he noticed that my analog stuff when I glued it together, it's just a little imperfect. It's a little different. And it matches his music that's like a little more handmade and demo-y. So he sent me a folder of, of images and textures and papers and ephemera he'd been collecting for the past year or two. And that was a really cool collaboration. And one of the first times an artist did that where that's they sent me own. the collage material. I was listening to his music that wasn't even done yet. And we're both creating this project almost by hand and he's supplying stuff from his life so it's so personal and the project all the artwork is done it's going to be coming out this year and it's definitely one of my favorite projects i've ever worked on um, but one other thing i wanted to say especially to designers working in any field it's really great to have a, a mood board that contains very specific references i'm not talking about a mood board of just vibes i'm talking about a mood board that is a conversation about the concept mm -hmm. where there's three to five very, very specific references that are going to lead the design aesthetic. This is different than 20 pictures of just a vibe. I really think that if you want to get a project greenlit and without tons of changes, you're going to agree on a concept and an aesthetic right away to save yourself some time in the long run. Let's go with the tangible takeaways. <laughs> Man, yeah. I love it. I appreciate you, Dewey. Thank you. Dewey had such great insights and collaboration, and I really enjoyed hearing about his progression from pen and ink to collage to digital tools. Thanks again to Cloudy Virginie and Elise Swopes for sharing their interviews with us. You can find their show, Creative Connection Live, on Instagram at either I am Cloudy, that's spelled K L A U D I, and also at Swopes, S W O P E S. I hope you're all having a creative and fulfilling summer. Thanks for listening to In The Making, brought to you by Adobe Express, the all-in-one content creation app included in your Creative Cloud membership. If you like this episode, be sure to leave us a rating and a review and subscribe in your favorite podcast app. I'm Teresa Ao, and I'll see you next time.